Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the future of the water and waste of water industry, the careers you didn't know about. And I'm your host, Dave Kuzminski, and we are here at At Cave uh, in our annual vendor conference and technical expo. And with us is an old friend of mine, been in the industry a long time, Mr. Dan Lesneski. Hi, Dan. How are you? Great, Dave. Good to see you. Uh, hey, it's when you get our age, it's good to be seen. My God. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, so as you know, I launched this podcast. Oh, we're I think we're at episode number 45 now. Okay. Yep. And uh, basically, we're just trying to promote, uh, you know, careers within the water and wastewater industry. And I know you've been in the industry a long time. So um, tell us how you got started in, in, in the water industry. Well, actually, um, my, my career started in the industry. Um, as a co-op student when I, at the University of New Haven. Oh, okay. And uh, working a little while I was in school and finishing up, uh, there was an opportunity at Connecticut Water, uh -huh. uh, which I jumped on or, or was am able to, to get involved with. Sure. Um, I wound up doing my senior project uh, on a water system, which was uh, okay. helped being in the industry for that limited six months or so before. Sure. Uh, but then I just stayed on with Connecticut Water uh after graduating. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, d did you have any inkling as far as going through high school and into college that you wanted to get involved in the water industry? No, nah, not, not at all. I mean, uh, my strongest uh, suit was, was mathematics. I was Numbers came pretty easy to me. Okay. Um, and going through the process in high school was, you know, uh, good at math, like sciences, uh, you know, get into the engineering field. Okay. And I started in a mechanical and electrical uh, degree program and didn't do very well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got out of that and then transferred into University of New Haven where the civil program was run. Okay. And uh, again, led into the water in industry through the uh, co-op opportunity. Nice. Hey, and that gave you the opportunity to get involved with Connecticut Water. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so now uh, in Connecticut, were you in uh, – the Clinton office, or where? What? what uh yeah, my, initially I started my career in the engineering department. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so right out of school was, uh, it was uh, I forget what the act exact title was, Dave, but it was more of a project inspector. Okay. Uh, on an interim basis out of school. Okay. And I stayed uh, in the engineering department in various roles for about three years. Okay. And I had an opportunity to move into the operations side of things. Nice. Nice. Uh, Required relocation from from New Haven area yep. up up to uh, our office in East Windsor. Oh, so okay. So I, 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 yeah, I was single at the time, and uh, seemed like a good thing to do. And I spent a lot of time up in the northern part of the state nice. where I still live. Well, that's that's good. And uh, uh, is is the wife retired now? Chris is retired. Yeah, she retired uh, May first of uh, last year. Nice. So she's coming up on one year. Nice. Yeah. Enjoying it. Well, now now that you're retired now. Yes, where you get to spend a little bit of time. Now, yeah. does she, did she golf as much as you do? No, she can't. She doesn't <laughs> like swinging at clubs. She's she's more into gardening and horses. Okay, so nothing wrong with that. Nothing, yeah, nothing wrong with that. No, but she spent a lot of years in the medical field there. She she was uh, yeah surgical RN for at least thirty four years or so. Wow, wow. Yeah, so she misses the uh, the activity. She doesn't miss uh, some of the politics of it. But yeah, well, yeah. Had a lot of good times at uh, you know the annual conferences and so forth, and getting out and meeting her and so forth. So so anyway, g getting back to you on, the, on uh, Connecticut Water now. Um, how many years did you do with Connecticut Water? I completed thirty-seven years. Okay, yeah. all right, good. Uh, probably about eighteen years in operations. Okay, and the other nine or so in engineering. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, obviously, I I think Connecticut. I you know. Uh, Maureen Westbrook was, I think, my first or second uh, interview that we did uh, and so forth. And now she just retired this year yeah. uh, and so forth. So there's a lot of us old stalwarts are, you know, getting to the end of the tunnel here. Yeah. <laughs> <You> know, so <laughs> to go, go from there. So, uh, you know, how, how many how many customers now does uh, the, the Connecticut Water have? I think they're what? I thought it's around 125,000 somewhere wow. around there and now know, across the state. Yeah, and now you, you also have, you know, according to more, I think you also have stuff in Maine now? Yeah, I think there's uh, subsidiaries in Maine. Uh, also, we're part of the uh, San Jose group. So uh, out of California. We only own so by, yeah, California stuff. and Texas. So and Texas, yeah. yeah so there's well, opportunities, you know, across the, 
across all those subsidiaries for for employment. In other right, words, right. Jobs posted in in one state uh, are posted to everyone. So okay. you know if you if you're ambitious or interested in moving to a relocation, there's there's always opportunity. For right, you. right, right. You know that that's 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 great. Well, you know, uh, as, as far as uh, Connecticut Water, just giving everybody a little perspective, is 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 uh, is an investor owned uh, utility. Uh, so the types of utility that we have in the in the, in the water industry, obviously, is a uh, We've got the uh, investor owns, uh, which are basically your shareholders and so forth. You've got the municipalities, which basically I'm part of, okay, being town of Portland. And we also have the regions, okay, or quasi-publics, if you would. So we have the uh, the regional waters and the, the NBCs and so forth. So right. all, uh, you know, serving a, a, a broad population across the street under. And everybody, you know, d- depending on if you're a municipality, investor owned or uh, quasi-public, you know, uh, ha- have different rules to play by <laughs> absolutely know, as, as far as that goes so uh it, it's it's great you know uh you know i know obviously from from a from a personal side uh, you like to do a, a, a lot of golfing yep uh and so forth now you you of course you and melanson have been uh, partners in crime for many many years yes we have yeah. <laughs> and we had steve on the podcast so he did he, uh and so forth but uh uh you know uh, and I, I think you also did some work for, for uh, Snyder Civil also. Yeah, I, I, well, my transition out of Connecticut Water, I worked part-time uh, for Connecticut Water through through uh, Civil Eng- uh, Snyder, Snyder Engine. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, Don has asked me to stay on a little bit here and there, help out with a, f- a few projects okay. on an as-needed basis, and I'm available to him uh, for that. They're a pretty good outfit. I'm Steve works with them now full-time. Yeah, he's a uh, uh, couple of director of operations, <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, I, 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 sometimes it's just a phone call, you know, that guys will say, what, what's your thoughts about this or these folks or, um, you know, this situation. And, and, you know, they, they'll question, uh, my, my experience as far as, uh, just, just get an opinion on things. Yeah. You yeah, know, well, I, I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. Well, exactly. <laughs> and, and that knowledge base is, uh, you know, from a standpoint of, uh, is invaluable because, you know, you've got. Young guys are just getting into the industry or just getting out of the school. Um, you know, they know all of the, the laws, the regulations, but, you know, to put it into practical use, to see it in the field, what works, what doesn't work. Because a lot of times, you know, uh, and you know it as well as I do, you know, the, the engineers, when they draw something up on paper, when you get out in the field, it's, it's a totally different story. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> one, one of the things, uh, you know, in that regard, with the last uh, – position I held was uh, running the, the WICA program, which was the infrastructure right, replacement yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that I, I was, uh, as a manager of that program, I, I really wanted was the, the individuals who were going to be responsible for building the project yep. to do the design. Okay. So that if they had, if they came across something, which inevitably they would, yep. uh, that was different than expected, yep. they knew what they did, why they did it, and it gave them, we gave them the leeway to correct it. In sure. the field, so there wasn't a back and forth between, you know, g- calling me to say why'd you do it this way and can I go that go the other way? Yeah, it was theirs. It was yeah. their responsibility. They took ownership of it from basically from start to finish. Sure, sure. And we gave the we gave the folks in that um, that responsibility that level of uh, comfort with them. Sure. Yeah, uh, to allow them to do that. The latitude, you know? yeah. yeah well, the latitude yeah. to do it. Exactly. Yeah, and, and plus it, you know, it cuts down on the change orders. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you could do t- make a move on a fly, it, it's definitely going to save you in the long run. Yeah, rather than go through the channels and all oh that yeah. stuff, it yeah. has to get approved and da 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 da, and so well. and so it goes. Yeah, for sure. So um, anyway, so what's up in the, in, in the future? I know you uh, you you uh, went down south, did a little golfing down there. Yeah, well, we we purchased a place in North Carolina back in uh, 2015. Okay. We've been able to use it a little bit, you know, while I was working, but since 2020, I've been back and forth quite a bit. Nice, <laughs> nice. I uh, just came back from five weeks. I got in uh, about 18 rounds over the five-week period. That sounds um, good. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice jump on the the local golfers here. Yeah. So when, it, when the season starts here, I'm going to be a little bit ahead of the game. Well, that, that that's the thing now. Now, you, you play quite a bit in Portland, too, don't you? We, I, I used to play at the Portland. Uh, we had a league there for a number of years, 20, 25 years. But, okay. Uh, I, I also work um, at a golf course up in Bloomfield, the uh, Wittenberry Hills. Okay. A couple days a week, so I, I had to back away from the, the Wednesday league. Okay. Uh, but I do uh, starter duties and uh, 
and run some carts around for them and help run tournaments when they have them. So it's fun. It gets me out of the house uh, and, you know, gives me a little bit of uh, time away from. Sure. Uh, plus, plus you get some free tea times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the free golf is always good. <laughs> you go from there. I know, you know, playing golf with you at the, you know, on the, uh, you know, the annual uh, conference tournaments, man, uh, uh, you, you you hit the ball a ton. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, it's like okay. Used to, I used to. Well, I, you know, times catching up. But yeah, I hear you. I still love getting out there, and I can I can put it out there for for a guy my age. I can still get it out there pretty well. well that's good. Uh, that, that's good. Fantastic. Yeah. And I get a regular Saturday tea time, uh, pretty steadily up at the Cedar Knob Golf Course in summers. Okay. Uh, been there for 35 years or so, and uh, Steve Moats and myself, Fred yeah. Rogers, and Dennis Bow. Yeah, yeah, we put together a regular foursome, and we have a little friendly go. wager every week. Why not? It's Why always not? good to get Freddie dollars. Exactly. <laughs> T- taking Freddie dollars is one of Mel's favorite things. To Freddie do. dollars, fantastic. Well, you know, and some people like to play poker. Yeah. Some people like to play golf. You know, you can wager on either one. Yeah. You know, as far as that goes. All right. Anyway, Dan, thanks so much for coming down and uh, give us a little perspective on what goes into being in the water industry. The the, the tent is big, and we're just trying to get this out there to uh, you know, uh, you know, before I go, you know, what what advice would you give to a high school senior or, or uh, uh, a college freshman. Uh, well, I, I think the one thing in the water industry is, is the opportunities are very broad. Yeah. It, it goes across the gamut from business uh-huh. uh, perspective to engineering to water quality stuff. There are many opportunities. There are there are good opportunities on a prof- uh, let's say a more uh, professional career as opposed to f- uh, but uh, there's opportunities in the field as sure. well. So there are d- and and generally when you get into a, into uh, a water utility, there's opportunity to grow. To grow either. To grow up, up out, sideways. over. Yeah, there's always opportunity um, to to find your niche and, and really succeed. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing, you know. And, you know, ironically, you know, the, the, the podcast I did just before you, I got a whole different perspective. Uh, Lisa Baxter from the Diving Services. Huh? That that was a whole different uh, exposure to the industry. Something you don't think about. Huh? Yeah, exactly, and so forth. And again, you know, uh, in her industry, and you know, and, uh, a lot of times in, in the water industry, you don't necessarily have to have a college degree to get into oh. the industry. You know, you can get in as a meter reader, construction operator, equipment operator, uh, whatever. But uh, the opportunity is there to grow both up and out, and uh, to go from there. So, all right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Mr. Dan Lesneski was here in the house. And uh, again, that concludes this episode of the careers uh, and the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and uh, we are here at the At Cave Technical Conference and Vendor Expo here at the Aquaturf. So uh, stay tuned for some more interesting episodes on uh, careers you didn't know about. Thanks so much. <laughs>